Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will learn about a program that matches sheltered dogs with veterans who need assistance. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, our heat wave continues. Hazy sunshine, it's already 89 degrees. The heat advisory remains in effect with highs today in the low, perhaps mid 90s. Another uncomfortable night tonight, rather stuffy, with temperatures dropping off into the lower 70s. And the heat just amplifies over the weekend with uh, temperatures tomorrow in the upper 90s, feeling more like 100. Extreme heat here on Sunday with a temperature of 96, but it will feel like more than 100 degrees. It should break later on Monday with some afternoon storms. Still pretty hot, though. The high near 90 on Monday it looks warm, actually, all of next week. Right now, hazy sunshine, 89 degrees in Quincy. Checking news for you today, MBTA General Manager Steve Poftak says that it would take $300 million to implement all of the improvements that the Federal Transit Administration says the T needs. During testimony before state lawmakers earlier this week, Poftak said the T is making progress on some of the federal mandates, including replacing worn out tracks and launching a big hiring campaign to fill empty positions in the operation. Operations Control Center, but Poftak said additional improvements would require additional funding, although he says the T is committed to making the system safe and reliable. At least one lawmaker questioned whether the MBTA should be eliminated and that the system be taken over by the State Department of Transportation. The Four River residents against the compressor station are hailing a recent decision that asks the Department of Environmental Protection to take another look at a waterways permit that was granted to that natural gas compressor station in North Weymouth. An adjudicator with the DEP said that the agency should revisit the Chapter 91 permit that allowed Enbridge Energy to build that station at its current location, claiming there's no evidence to show that the facility couldn't have been built at a more remote site. Well, Enbridge says it is reviewing the decision. Opponents called the decision a major victory in their efforts to get the facility shut down. The governments of Quincy, Braintree, and Hingham do continue their legal battle against the compressor station, calling it a health and safety risk for the Four River Basin. The town of Weymouth accepted a $10 million payment from Enbridge Energy in exchange for ceasing all legal opposition to that facility. 25 new police officers are joining the ranks of the Quincy Department. A swearing-in ceremony was held recently at City Hall, welcoming the new patrol officers to the force. Quincy Police Chief Paul Keenan said the new officers are coming during a crucial time in the department. Uh, Quincy is a great city to work in. As far as the department goes, we have a number of different opportunities. You can make rank, you can make detective, we have boats, we have a SWAT team, we have dogs. We have bicycles, we have motorcycles. Anything that you really want to do, you can do it in the Quincy Police Department. So I wish you well. Stay together. It's going to be a challenging next six or seven months getting through the academies. Some of them are very difficult, but you've been vetted, and I think you're all up to the task. Stay together as a group when you go to the academy. Work hard to get through it as a group, and welcome to Quincy Police. The new officers come from surrounding police departments, from the Norfolk County Sheriff's Office and the UMass Police Department. Six of them will begin field training immediately after completing academy training. The remaining 19 officers will begin seven months of training at police academies in Plymouth and Randolph. When the new officers are on duty, there will be 180 patrol officers in Quincy. Quincy police are searching for a man who broke into Rags Tavern on Washington Street in Quincy Point. Police say this man broke into the business on July 15th. It's unclear if anything was stolen. Anybody with information is asked to contact Quincy detectives. And Quincy police issuing a warning about a possible chimney repair scam. Police say this man has been claiming to be a chimney repair specialist and has approached several residents about having work done on their homes. Police say the man has a thick Irish brogue and may be driving a white pickup truck with Florida plates. Anybody with information is asked to contact Quincy Police. Coming up, 
we learn about a program that connects shelter dogs with needy veterans. That's next. Welcome back. Really excited to learn about a, a program here today helping veterans uh, with the shelter dogs and helping them both really at the same time and also about helping veterans in general through two different uh, guests that we want to welcome. Travis Partington and Amber Smith are here to learn about the IGY6, I Got Your Six or Back uh, program and also Oscar Mike Radio. So Travis and Amber, great to have you both here. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. No, it's, it's our pleasure. Our pleasure. I wanted to ask you first of all, um, uh, Amber. Maybe we could start with you and sure. tell us a little bit about your background yeah. um, and how you got interested in veterans' issues. Okay. So I'm originally from Quincy. I'm from Howes Neck, and um, my grandfather served in Vietnam. My great grandfather served in World War II. I have an uncle who served in Afghanistan and Iraq, and several friends. Um, in 2020 of August, I lost a friend who died by suicide due to their PTSD from serving in Afghanistan and uh, just several friends, I've seen them suffer through it. Mm -hmm. And I have one particular friend, so I actually work in the mental health field as well, and I have one particular friend who suffered from PTSD so severely, had gone to several treatment centers and nothing was working for him until he received a service dog named Bosco and he now is married, he has a son, he works a full-time job and he's able to live his life normally since receiving his service dog. Wow. But after I lost my friend in August, I it hit me really hard and I needed to do something and so we just came up with the idea to rescue service dogs from down south at kill shelters mm. and um, bring them up to, well, our last event we actually had someone in North Dakota receive a service dog and so we saved the dogs at the kill shelters, partner them up with veterans and we put them through service dog training. We're able to do it roughly around $500 versus about $20,000 and what other wow. places do it for. That's astounding. So, so it really opens up access to so right. many more people yeah. to get that dog. That it really it. does. Yeah. Yes. Did you start IGY6 yourself? It, I did. It was just supposed to be a one-time event. I linked up with Travis and it kind of blew up oh. and so now we're keeping it going because we were able to help so many people and we would just want to keep doing it and you know like I said I, we had people approach us asking us to continue this and so we're doing so. Do you know about how many uh, veterans you've been able to help so far? So far three. We're okay. hoping to double that this year. Okay. So. Yep. How many of you are there, Amber, in, in IGY6? So I have great support from my family. Yeah. Travis has been pretty much my right-hand man, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, but I have, so it's me and Travis doing a lot of it. My mom is very helpful with like the different parts, my brother Jacob and Caleb. So it's definitely a family thing. I would say about five, between five and ten of us with okay. different little things and jobs that each person's assigned. This yeah. reminds me a lot of, are you familiar with the organization Cell Phones for Soldiers? I do, yes um, I know. Many, it. many years ago I had the founders, they were just teenagers at that time, yeah. here in this same studio. That's awesome. And they kind of got started the same way, sitting around the dinner yep. tables, you know, they were impacted um, directly uh, yeah. by somebody in the service and wanted to do something. And look where that organization yeah. has gone. So I know. So, so hopefully, fingers story. crossed. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about how you and Travis uh, got together. Um, we actually have a mutual friend, Keith Hayes, and um, Keith is actually a family friend. And I asked Keith actually to DJ my event, and um, he did it willingly, um, volunteered his time and stuff like that. We've been very, very blessed with people donating time and you know different baskets and stuff mm -hmm. and he put me in contact with Travis and said I think this would be a great person you know to get the ball rolling with you and Travis has led me on the right way so just a mutual friend and it was really a blessing. A natural connection. Yeah. 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 So Travis, um, what do you think about all this? I think it's great. Yeah. It's always good when a civilian understands the plight and need of the veteran and takes their time to assist us. And you know Amber's strong family connection to the military and veterans in general, you know, compelled me to help out. And, and it's really great to see in this day and age when so many people get cynical about what's going on. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. I'm guessing there's a military background. There is a military yeah. background. So I served in the Marine Corps. I'm not from this area. I served in the Marine Corps. I joined out of Louisiana. 
I served from 95 to 99. I was a Hawk missile systems operator. So we fired a missile about as long as your car at aircraft targets 40, 60 miles away. It was a lot of fun. And then got out and moved here and didn't know much about the Red Sox or how to say <laughs> Worcester. I said Worcester. Um, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It how about was, Quincy? Uh, well, Quincy was easy. Pe okay. Peabody, we say Peabody <laughs> where I'm from, not Peabody. So, gotcha. you know, got used to the area. And then for me, you know, I saw a lot of my, you know, fellow veterans and Marines I served with you know, in distress because of things in their life after service, trouble getting jobs, mm -hmm. trouble getting, you know, VA loans, so on and so forth. And I got compelled around the time when the 22 a day was really rearing its head. And I said, I got to do something. You know, I'm going through a hard time in my life. What can I do? So ju just, in, just to clarify, 22 veterans every day commit suicide. At the time. And, and, yeah. and it's gone down to like 17. I hate to, to quantify it like that, but yeah. that's the truth. But in back in 2016, when I got started really in veterans advocacy, it was 22 a day. Okay. And I, I wanted to do something, and I started doing some radio work at WVBF in Taunton, and started my own show, Oscar Mike Radio, that just turned six last week, by oh, the way. Okay, happy anniversary. So that's kind of how Amber and I have met. I've grown a network of people who know other people, and so when she came to me about what she was doing, it was sure what can I do to help okay and what can you do to help what have you done to help well I, I sit there and say hey how are we going to promote this event mm -hmm. where people can understand what's going on how can you keep your message aligned with what you're trying to do at all times who are good people that will help you out and who can you know understand what you're trying to do and how can we get the money you raised to the dogs to get to the veterans and it sounds like you've been pretty successful so far. It was really great seeing yeah. what she was able to do last year, the people's response, and we just think we're going to blow it away this year. How do you actually find the veterans that need the assistance? You know, how does that connection happen? So I'm connected to several different groups. I'm a life member of the Marine Corps League, a life member of DAV, and then there's several social groups on social media that, you know, we all get together mm -hmm. and talk about need, talk about you know, who's going on, I'll get a phone call or a Facebook message. Um, I point people to Amber's way, you know. It's a small family, yeah. and we're able to help each other out. And how do you find the dogs, and how do you how do you make that That's match? That's more that Amber's that's area of expertise. Okay. I'll let her tell, tell you about that. Okay. So I actually rescued a dog myself um, last year, I and this woman, Michelle, actually put me in contact with another woman who a friend of mine adopted a dog from, and then she had a connection down south, actually, in Texas, and this woman started her own 501c3. She lives on a farm down there, hmm. and what she does is she raises money adopts the dogs from the kill shelters gets them in tip-top shape and instead of with us instead of making a profit yeah. she only charges us the traveling fee okay she won't right. even charge us the medical fee wow. um, so yeah it's a lot of people giving you know we're all working together as a team and you know say Travis found someone who needed a dog and they have kids or they have other pets already like a cat or so or even a, another dog mm -hmm. but they just specifically needed a service dog yes i'm able to give that list to my i call her a friend now louisa and she'll say this is the type of dog you know medium built great with kids blah 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 blah, and we pair it up with that person okay how long does it take to uh, get a service dog ready to help uh, a veteran with ptsd it goes at their own pace okay. so the program that we do it's usually up to six weeks that's the littlest amount of time that they can do mm -hmm. but if they want to take up to two years to train the dog whatever mm -hmm. they do it at their very own pace okay so yeah and is there um, a process where if there's a, a problem or if they need more training or a change is there so a way that they can the people that? yeah the people that we actually do the training with they do that one-on-one -on -one. um they actually do zoom sessions yeah. and whatnot yeah. so um if there's an issue they're able to do the zoom with the trainer and say hey you know this is happening we actually had an issue with one of our dogs because they were so used to living in the heat down <laughs> in texas that <laughs> they went and lived there. January they are now in, in yeah. North Dakota actually oh, okay. believe it or not that's where the veteran is and the dog was not liking the snow <laughs> ended up going to the bathroom in the house and um, it was a big fiasco yeah. and stuff like that and they were able to communicate and stuff like that yep. with the trainers and you know talk and say what can I do differently this okay. is not just 
typical service dog training this is actual you know house training right. so they were able to work through that so they're very supportive and stuff and it's legit service can go into a store take them on an airplane it's all certified yep, they get the best with oh, the yes. service dog yep. yeah yeah okay yes. is there any cost at all for the veteran to to take no. this no no we that we cover that okay yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yes. It would seem that there should be a more formal process through the VA already existing that would help these veterans with this you, type of service. Yeah, you would think. I know that they are actually trying to pass a law recently to get um, health insurance to cover this, yeah. but that's probably going to take some time. And, you know, of course, only certain health insurances will probably cover mm. it. So we're hoping that one day it will be pr pr processed through because... They deserve it. They right. deserve the help. I mean, they defend our country. For a veteran uh, maybe watching or listening to this program and uh, thinks they might benefit from a service yep. dog, what's the process, Amber? How, how does it start? Um, they can either email me personally or um, IGY6fundraiser at gmail.com or we have a Facebook group and it's actually semicolon IGY6 and they can message us personally and, you know, we'll do an interview with them and mm -hmm. see what we think is best. Okay. Um, Travis, for your part, um, obviously you have a, a broader reach through your um, radio program. Are you hoping maybe to uh, have government take a, uh, take another look at this and say maybe we can help? So, you know, the VA is looking at this, yeah. looking at this therapy, equine therapy, and other alternative therapies as the, the driver really is just reduced special suicide. So there is aspects of standardizing, you know, what is a service dog what is equine therapy for example and then align that to a program that can be funded mm -hmm. so that is in progress there's people at the vfw level the american legion mm -hmm. level and, and people like myself who will go and advocate for that but where amber is so special and, and you know what she's doing with her family is we can now use the work she's doing as proof that this works mm -hmm. And so it can be aligned to a program, it can be aligned to an expenditure outlay, and we can see, and I hate to say this, return on investment, because when you, when you figure the cost of a suicide, just in the, the gap for family, mm -hmm. friends, and children of that veteran, you can't calculate it. But the actual cost for a suicide, you know, you're looking it up on the, the data, is about $3 million over the course of a lifetime. So... We lead with that, and we're getting a lot of cooperation from the VA. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, not to mention the cost of treating PTSD, right? Correct. Um, if, if it can be treated through a service dog, think of, I mean, if you want to talk just dollars and cents, think of the savings that that could result. When, when you watch the veteran live their life again because of a service dog, that, that and they didn't have to worry about you know, procuring that animal, taking care of that animal, and it's provided for them, when you watch their life change, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer that we should do this more, which is what makes this so important, what Amber's doing. Have you known anybody personally um, suffering from PTSD or benefiting from a service animal? Yes, I do. Really? Unfortunately, yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. What about you yourself? Not from the military, but okay. I've certainly had times in my life where it has been like, do I want to keep doing this? Yep. And, you know, a lot of veterans support me. You know, I want to support them. Sure. Um, there's a big uh, Veterans uh, Expo here in Quincy tomorrow, actually, uh, up at Pageant Field. Amber, you're probably aware of, um, with uh, career benefits, uh, help with benefits. There will be uh, some military vehicles on display. It's a family event um, as well. So Quincy um, definitely steps up uh, and helps its veterans. No question about it. Yeah. Let's talk about an event coming up in uh, November, actually. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like cool thoughts now, but it's <laughs> in the middle of a heat wave. Yes. Um, down at Whitman, right, Amber? Yes, yeah. the Whitman VFW. What's going on? So we'll have some amazing guest speakers. We actually, one of our recipients, the North Dakota recipient, will be traveling oh. back from Boston. I'm very happy to say he actually is doing wonderful and has a job at the VA out there now. Really? So he's now able to be a mentor and actually help other veterans. Um, so it's really great to see now the process, you know, the gift that of us, and then full he's circle now, right there. yes, it yeah. is, giving back. Um, so he'll be flying in, discussing how his life has changed now since he has his service dog, Jules, is her name, and we'll have another, you know, more amazing speakers, we provide dinner, um, again, Keith Hayes, the DJ, will be DJing, and it's a great time, just so many amazing speakers, a fun time. We did karaoke last year just to get everybody going, a bunch of raffles, and 
to be there it just feels so loving yeah. and supporting and you know travis absolutely loved my grandmother last year my grandmother's from quincy and she is a world war ii daughter a vietnam veterans wife and an afghanistan and iraq wow. mother so um you know just having her there to see the different generations that she has witnessed and see mm. everybody there it was just very overwhelming for her lots of tears for her really yeah oh, oh it was absolutely amazing so you know that's something we don't think about, is it? Is the impact that um, that a veteran's issues has on their family? Yeah. Right. It's not just that one person, yeah. but it's everybody yeah. who loves I was, them. Yeah. yeah. I was just telling Travis the photo behind you actually flags a veteran yes. island. My grandfather has a flag there. My great grandfather has a flag. I have four great uncles, and my cousin's wife has a flag there. Wow. So that's why. So it's meaningful. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's all hit us, you know, PTSD, and you know we did suffer a loss as a family mm -hmm. um it does hit you as a civilian you know of course nothing compared to what the veterans go through no, no, but right, watching but your loved one you know i remember having to throw stuff at my grandfather to wake him up because mm -hmm. you didn't know how he was going to react you know that's not normal mm -hmm. that's they deserve normalcy yeah. they deserve to live they are putting their lives on the line line they deserve deserve no malice yeah. you know and that's what we're trying to provide for them once the, um, they have the service dog is it is it kind of their responsibility to care for it after that it is but yeah. if they needed help you know of course we would never turn our back you know right. if they were going through a tough time and oh oh i need help with you know medical expense or you know and of course all dogs comes fixed in spade mm -hmm. so they don't have to worry about that but you know if they were having a tough time oh i can't afford dog food or something yeah. which you know we have no problem doing that but we've never had to come to that you know and we do send them away with their little goodie bags and stuff okay. like that okay. so yeah is there an ideal dog that makes the best service dog would you say or or does it just have to be a different fit for every i think individual? it's a different fit for everyone yeah. we've definitely had a mixture i mean the my friends that i've seen that have service dogs and the service dogs that we have you know provided they've been all different breed shapes mm -hmm. sizes and different home styles mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so right. i think it's different for everyone yeah the living situations are all different yeah. right from uh, apartments to farms oh, yeah. to everything in between yeah. right exactly um if there is a veteran in um uh, an assisted living setting can you help them as well oh yeah okay yeah they can nobody can be denied as long as it is a registered service dog yes they nobody can be denied okay yep good to know mm -hmm. um travis for your part reaching out through your um, your different media um what are you hearing from veterans about this particular effort the veterans come to me and say you know hey this looks real because a lot of us get cynical over time mm -hmm. you know Veterans Day, Memorial Day, yay, 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 veterans, and then the rest of the year you hear nothing. Mm. So when you tell the story that, you know, this young woman here has a generational family of service to our country and that she is continuing to serve for her family's memory and legacy, it connects with them in a very real way and they want to get involved, they want to see how they can help, whether it's a couple of dollars or a oh. sponsorship or anything. Okay. We understand as veterans that we have to take care of ourselves, and it really resonates with us when someone who did not serve wants to help us out. Yeah, I would think um, that really means you've got your message across, and you know, and you've succeeded. Absolutely. Are you taking a note from other people in other parts of the country? Uh, are they uh, saying, "Hey, maybe we can start this in, I don't know, Arizona or you know, uh, Seattle or wherever"? I think I don't want to speak for you, but I think the the focus is to get our program right here mm. and, and make sure we have everything documented processes and procedures down mm -hmm. or fundraising down and then if we get approached by somebody who wants to replicate that we certainly would help them out okay for folks uh, in the shelter world amber who are listening and say gee i wonder if we might be able to connect with you and find homes permanent homes you yeah. know for some of our animals does that be something that oh, you'd be absolutely. interested in absolutely yeah. the more the merrier yeah. sure yeah. um shelter right here in quincy of course that would be amazing that yeah you're familiar with yeah. but um there are others um as well so this is the second annual fundraiser yes. i noticed how did the first one go i mean like better than i could have imagined really yeah it was uh the speakers that we had um i had my friend lily darling she's a sergeant first class in the national guard and to hear her speak especially i, I mean correct me if i'm wrong but as a woman 
to speak on how much she has served mm. and my friend that has passed away she actually knew him as well just to hear her speak so deeply and elegantly it was absolutely amazing just to have a female up there it just mm -hmm. made me prideful mm -hmm. and to know that was one of my friends um we had both the recipients speak um patrick was actually overseas when he got the phone call that his little brother had passed away mm -hmm. so he had to fly home to bury his brother to then fly back to afghanistan and this was back in 2011 so a lot of stuff was going on then you know yeah um and then we opened the mic, which was really awesome because we just had, you know, between my seven-year-old niece going up and just saying thank you to all the veterans and yeah. God bless America, to see how young that these kids are and how young they are affected by it to, you know, my grandmother who's in her 70s. There's no certain age of where it affects you, right. you know? I, like, it was just really overwhelming, but in a great way, bittersweet. It was awesome. Thank you both for sharing your story, um, and I wish you a very successful Thank event uh, later this year, and um, success with your uh, your program, Travis, reaching out as well. Thank you so much for having us yes. on. We appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Thank Hopefully, you. it our little way as well. You're welcome. Just enough time to check the uh, forecast again for you for the rest of the day today. The uh, heat uh, continues, low 90s this afternoon, and only getting hotter <laughs> from here on out through the weekend. We might break a record. It was 98 on a Sunday in Boston. We'll see if we uh, approach that one. Cool off a little bit next week. Thanks again to Travis Pennington and also Amber Smith for joining us Thank here you. from uh, IGY6 and Oscar Mike Radio. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here in the show, it's the Friends of Faxon Park. We'll learn about their picnic in the park coming up later on this month. Don't forget our website anytime, qatv.org. All of our latest programs are there. There's news and information, uh, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a cool weekend.